Ladies and gentlemen, we're always taking it a notch higher through informative and intellectual debates here on Kenya's number one debate platform. This is the Great Debates Contest Season 8, Eldoret Region. I am your host, Chris Boru. And I am Esperancia Kapanga. And today, the conversation continues on quite a sensitive topic. Parents should be allowed to choose their baby's gender. Proposing this motion, we have the lovely ladies from Moiti Girls High School making their premier appearance on the Great Debaters Contest. And opposing the motion, we have the gentlemen from Laborette Boys High School. Proposal number one, you have three minutes. We all know parents, right? And we all know who children are, right? Parents should be allowed to choose the gender of their children cause why not? I am Hilda Chanel from Moiti Girls, and I strongly propose the motion that states that parents should be allowed to pick the gender of their babies. Okay, my first point is that parents should be allowed to pick the gender of their children because the parents, after knowing the gender of the child, will love and have compassion against towards that child. As for those who have gone through the set text, Blossoms of the Savannah by Henry Olekulet, the last born daughter of Ole Kailo, who was called Resian, was resented and, de and de was resented was not, and was not loved by the father. And she grew up she grew up having hatred against herself. She did not love herself. She did not have that feeling of joy and she did not have self-love for herself. And she grew up bewildered and very awkward to deal with. And if Ole Kule Ole Kaelo was given this opportunity to go and pick the gender of the child. Ole Kaelo would have chosen to have a male child. And all this, all this torture that Tresian would have undergone would have been prevented by, having, by Ole Kaelo having to, the opportunity to pick the gender of the child. My second point is that if a family sits down and decides that, OK, we are going to have this child, and I want this child to be a male child, for example. I decide that me as the mother and the father come together to decide the gender of this child. When we come together and raise this child with all the love and passion towards the, towards the child that we will have we will not abuse this child when the child grows up. We will not neglect this child when the child grows up because we have cases and instances in the country where, as we all know, children have been abused, children have been neglected since the parents or one of the parents did not like the gender of the child. You end up getting very many children left on the street because maybe the father wanted a male child or the mother wanted a female child. You see, if we get to decide on the gender of the children, won't we be given that opportunity to love and care the, for this child? Because all of us know, us as the parents, we would have decided and have known that we wanted this child to be a male child, so we'll be prepared for raising this, sorry, this child. And when those families come together, it will prevent the families from breaking, as just as I have said. I would also like to say that Yes, the families will, pre will be prevented from breaking since we all know that if the parents decide to come together and to talk about their differences and resolve them, we will get to know that these parents will have come together, they'll have settled on one specific gender of the child instead of having to break the bondage of love, the bond that this family had since the father maybe wanted a male child, as I have said, or the mother wanted a female child, which will lead to the breakage of the family. As we all know that if we have been given the opportunity to choose the gender of these children, for example, you as a mother, you will get to have the opportunity to pick the, the gender of this child. You will be happy to know that this child that I'm going to be having, he will, the child, he or she, will live up to the expectations that I have since the child will be of what preference that you wanted. So I would like to say that we should allow parents to pick the gender of their children. Thank you. Fast Puzo, you have three minutes to make a statement. I have sat for a few minutes and I have been thoroughly moved by the motion that have been presented to us. And I think this motion could be preluded with a word of prayer just to confess how sinful we are to discuss what is beyond our divine power 
to discuss the gender that we should give to our children before they are born. I want to define this motion simply by saying we are given now parents and marriage to be uh, an institution like a supermarket whereby you pick uh, the item that you want. Now I want to discuss the net effects of this motion. That first thing, choosing gender before birth is inhuman and offense human dignity. Why should I say so? The methods that are used to select gender, things like the in vitro fertilization that are radioactively modified and engineered. And that's why we will keep on crying and saying, we have rising number of cancer, we have rising number of tumors, and very many diseases that are attached to these chemically modified things to come and alter our reproduction. That on aside, I want to predicate my discussion in spiritual terms. And I'm a practicing Christian and I want and I'm a reader of the Bible, I want to refer you to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 29 to be exact. The Bible says, the sacredness of God belongs to God himself, but the things given to us belongs to us and our generation that we may do the will of God. We do not know what God does in a womb of a woman when that baby is being created. How therefore that we become so blasphemous and agree to do that which God could have done. Just this morning before I came to this discussion, I was reading the Muslim Quran, and I want to use this in other religions in, my, in microcosm. And the Quran says that the life of a human being is only known by God. No one can define, no one can choose. That one aside again, let me take you to now our African cultures. Choosing the baby before birth is preach of ethics of our African communities. Why should I say so? I want to pick one of the communities that lives in Kenya called the Nandi. Nandi is an extraction. It is an extraction of the Kalenjin elite. Nandi prohibits the naming of the baby before birth. Why? They consider God as the divine giver of life and gender in attachment. I know of divine practitioners in the old, where traditional African society tells us we had the rainmakers, we had the diviners, we had the, the, a lot of people who could, but we do not have people who chose gender. Therefore, why should we go against the foundation that the men of old gave us? I want to end this by saying, if I am a man and I'm betrothed to a woman who was chosen by their parents, I will not marry such a woman. Why? Man's wrong is always wrong. Man's choice is always wrong. Thank you. Second proposal, you have three minutes for cross-examination. If you have been observant enough, you have noticed in a family setup that hereditary diseases that are carried from one generation to the next. Um, here, after you have chosen, uh, you, after you have seen what I see in the hereditary diseases that are carried from one generation to the other, like the pattern of male badness, which I will call androgenetic alopecia. And I am here to bring you the revolution, which is sex selection. I am Farida Ahmed Moiti Girls, here to propose the motion that parents should be allowed to choose the gender of the babies. According to my Google research, the National Cancer Institute noted that prostate cancer, which is hereditary transmitted, 10% of, 10, 10 of prostate cancer is genetically transmitted. And the statistics here is about uh, 200,000 men. Prostate cancer affects the male, uh, the male side. So if we don't select the gender, we'll have this disease transmitted from one generation to the next. And, that, and the treatment of this prostate cancer, is, uh, which is chemotherapy, is about $20,000. That is round one of prostate cancer treatment. 
okay, um, countries like Italy, Mexico, and Thailand agree with me and my proposals that we should choose the gender of our children. Here, they agree that when we choose the gender, we can avoid the cases of abortion. What do I mean by abortion? When, uh, when we go, we, maybe when we, uh, we learn that we are expectant, we go through the ultrasound and we learn that our baby may be of this gender or the other. So if we are able to choose the gender before we conceive, we can reduce the cases of abortion. Um, choosing sex of offsprings involves selecting embryo for transfer, selectively terminating the pregnancy, and implantation. Um, here, we, we are in the 21st century, and we can see that there is rapid advancement in technology, where these methods of choosing the sex uh, of the children is improved and we can get better results from this. Where I have um, a, a person who has experienced this, Simena Duke from Italy, who said that she chose the gender of her baby and she is happy with the results. To my fellow opponents, uh, there is room for you to cross over and let's join together to support this motion. Thank you. Second opposer, you have three minutes for cross-examination. Ashley Montagu once noted that the tragedy of life is not death, but it's what you let die instead of you live. I'm Colin Skimutai from Laboriate Boys, strongly and firmly standing here to oppose the motion. Uh, the first proposal you told us that you refer us to the book of Blossoms of the Safana written by Henry Olekulet. It was good. But now, they, these methods that you're telling us are not 100%. So what could happen, what, and what will happen if you have, you have invested your money to, to, uh, to, uh, to, gender, to gender selection? Now what will happen if the, the, the results that you are, you, are, you, are, you are waiting for will come otherwise? You will hate the, the child more and more and more, and you will have wasted your resources taking, taking the child for, and making sex selection, and instead, you could have just waited for the, natu for the, nature, for the nature to take its course. This motion should not be discussed here, but we don't have to run away from problems, but we have to face them. The second proposal, you are, you are telling us that there are, some, there are some diseases that are inherited. You give us a good example of cancer. Yeah, I might agree that you have, but it, does, it doesn't have scientific proof. You also told us about cancer that it can be inherited to, to other people. If it's, if it's the case, it's just in minor, minor, very minor cases. I want to go to my first point, and before I go to that, then I have to define what the motion is. This is a situation where in couples come together, give a hand in choosing the gender of the baby prior to conception. Before the baby is born, they choose the gender. This is ungodly. It is disrespectful, unbelievable, and ethical. I am a practicing Christian, and in the book of Exodus chapter 16, verse 3, you will come to learn that God says, I am a jealous God. He is referring himself as a jealous God. We as humans, we want to become like God. God will punish us. Let's not do this because we are going to God's wrath. Let's escape this. Let's not go to this. The methods that you are telling us are quite expensive. It takes to about two, and two million Kenya shillings to just go for a pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. Two million Kenya shillings. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about 50,000 that our parents struggle to pay for our fees. No, I'm talking about 200 million, two million shillings. We are in a third world country where development is just a problem. So where, where can we get that money? I am a Christian and I am a practicing Christian. And you have been given that ability to take the baby for nine months, but you are not contented. And in the book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, the word of God says, I will take from those who are not contented and I will give to those who do not have. So let's not do this. Let's not go to the God's wrath and let's join us to oppose this motion so that we will fight this this problem that is coming, and we'll escape God's wrath, we'll escape Allah's wrath. Thank you. I'm calling to try elaborate.
The proposers have been asked with regards to the point that they stated that 10% of prostate cancers are caused by genetically determined factors. What causes the 90%, the other 90%, and what can be done about it? Will any will choosing of the genders of the children make a difference in these ones? The opposers, on the other hand, have been asked, what about the people who do not subscribe to the Christian faith? Where does that leave them in terms of decision making in this motion? Proposer number three, you have three minutes to answer the question. What are the other causes of prostate cancer? I'll give you one, radio waves. Well, you see, the, I think what you're trying to say is that the 10% may be really little. Annually, 200,000 men are diagnosed with prostate cancer. Is that little? Seriously, is that little? All those men are being affected by a disease that can be prevented. And one thing that I know is that if the parent knows that in one of their generations has prostate cancer, why dare? If you know that if there's a high chance that your son might be affected by prostate cancer, why can't you choose a daughter? By the way, if you don't know, chemotherapy, only the first stage, is very, very expensive. And if the family can avoid those situations, because I have a friend who actually died out of such diseases, it's painful, it hurts. And as a parent, I don't think you would enjoy if you could avoid the whole situation by choosing a girl. On to my next point. The, there's the effect of big families. For example, my dear, the first opposer first said, I, you didn't tell, I didn't hear your name actually, I think you didn't say. You say that, let nature take its course. Yeah, this is the African culture where you have to wait, wait, wait. You try number one. Okay, our obligation was we want to have a son. Baby number one, girl. Baby number two, girl. Baby number three, girl. Four, five, six. Seriously, huh? as a woman, I think that is too much. <laughs> exactly. And if I can avoid this by just choosing, I can be, I'm allowed. Technology, technology, oh sweet technology allows me to choose the gender of my child. Why shouldn't I? If I and my husband would love to have a son, why can't I take this? They say it's expensive, but this procedure is for those who really want it. If you don't want it, there is no problem. On to my next point. This, thanks to this, they say that it might be dangerous. The probability of getting an accurate answer has increased to almost 100%. So if this thing has been proven that it will go to produce a quality result, why can't we try it? Personally, I would love to choose a child of my own, according to the gender that I would love. And if you want to stop me because you think that it's the African, it's supposed to be nature to choose, then I think you're wrong. I would love to choose the gender of my child. I would love to only have two children with a husband I would love. And if you think that you're going to make me Give but six times for me to give your son. I would rather be single. Next. The, the next thing, I'll just give it in point form. This, if you think that this thing will affect the other gender, you can freeze your eggs. For example, if I only want a girl, I can decide that I freeze my male, my male children. When I want males later, I unfreeze them. I continue normal. Nature. Technology does the best things for us. And if you think we are going against God, God gave us a mind to think, imagine, create, and we created technology, and technology created this. Follow us. You'll see information coming out of you, and tech can do great things. Thank you. Father Puzo, you have three minutes to respond to your question. Prevention is better than cure, and all that glitters is not gold. My name is Brian Kipchumba from Laborate Boys High School Rise to the Top. Here, do not mistake this for a crime of passion. This is a crucial decision to make. In Jeremiah 1 verse 5, it says that before you were born, I knew you in the womb. See this. Imagine the mother wants to have a child. It is not stated that genetic variation children can be born by gender. It cannot... It can bring the child to have amorphodite, both gender sex. It is not assured that the child can be born to be a male child that you wanted. Let me tell you, do not use genetical variation because 
it causes a lot of complications to the mother also. Imagine the mother using antihistamine drugs. It will affect the mother. Imagine you are the child that has been born. Imagine you have deformity in your life. Imagine you have blindness, impaired of some things. Imagine how you can live in the situation of reality. I want you to take this for instance. A mother that has to be born, that born a child through this gender variation change. I want you to take this. He bores a child, then the child becomes a girl. Then about the ultrasound, they try to use the ultrasound to see the girl, in the, the girl or the boy in the body. Then they see it's a girl and the mother wanted a boy. How do you think the mother will feel? If the baby is still in the womb, he can, he can decide to do abortion. And abortion, as stated in chapter 4 at 26 in the Constitution, it is, a, it is a crime. And I want to see this. It is not good for the mother to abort because even the Mother Teresa of Calcutta said that abortion is a crime and a killer of innocence. I want to see this. Imagine in decision making, in James 1 verse 5, it says God will give those who do not have decision making generously and he will not doubt. I want you to see this. Imagine, how are we trying to change the law of God when he created us in Genesis 1 verse 1? Did he use anything like gender variation? No, he knew everything. He created us so that we can control all our things. I want you to see this. Imagine how we have plans. Children in the future generation will not see this as a blessing. It will be a plan. Please, let's not us change the way that genetics variation are trying to do to us. I think it is good for us to oppose our points. I want to see this. Imagine you are that parent that is trying to change. Your, change, your baby's gender, can't you just relax and let the blessing of God take its course? And Kajana Bhatia said that sex, sex gender violence, it is unethical and a, a very violent against human, against and the women first. Imagine, I want to tell to my fellow, to my fellow sisters here in Moichi, Okay, I'll now, I'll now clarify my points clearly. Then, Kajani Abate stated that sex selection via abortion is an act of violence and unethical. Please, my audience, I want you to see this. Let's not choose the gender variation because I op strongly oppose this because we are going against God's laws. Thank you very much. My brand is Brian Kipchumba. Thank you very much. <laughs>
and chemicals and seeking knowledge to contradict that which we could have done freely. Faith, you're asking about my name, but you have just mentioned your name shortly before I came here. My name is Kevin Sang from Laborate Boys. Thank you. Moiti girls, Chanel, uh, we liked the example that you heard of Rizian or Le Caello. It appeals to the audience. Um, it is something we can understand uh, from what you've told us. That, that was a good example. You had fair use of nonverbal communication. We liked that. We liked your gestures, your eye contact, your facials. You are a confident speaker. Keep it up. Farida, the point on chemotherapy costing $20,000 was questionable. And in order to convince us, you just needed to tell us, refer to www this, this, and that, which you would have and have become convinced. So that's why we say we need a source. Because you're talking about two million Kenya shillings just for a session of chemo. It's not that, it's not that expensive. A faith. You told us that there are 200,000 men with prostate cancer. What was your source again? We need to know where you're getting this information. That is crucial in a debate. We liked your, your clear, cool, collected logic, the way that you expressed your points without struggling. You told us uh, how we can get very many children when we are searching for a certain gender, that you want a girl, you end up getting seven boys, you're still searching for a girl. You could have told us that that impacts negatively on the population. That could be a major reason why there is population explosion. You're a great public speaker, Farid uh, Faith, keep it up. It was uh, an emotional topic, very interesting. And I liked the way Kevin came in when Chanel started very well, but there were gaps in your argument. You kept saying they, and I was asking myself, who are they that give children or choose the gender of a child? And Kevin came in and brought us the biblical version of it, and um, it was well done. And I also liked the way you brought in culture, the various religions, and you tied it up very well. So the opposing side, Collins, you are very strong. All of you did very well, and um, you countered what the proposing side said very well. As for the girls, Faith, you are a very strong debater. Keep it up. Chanel, you are good, even though there were gaps in your argument. And uh, Farida, you came up with the facts, and you've been told where the gaps are. Congratulations to both the team. And now, the results. Moiti Girls High School, you garnered 64.8%. Let's appreciate them. Laborette Boys High School, you earned yourself a whooping 70%. Let's give them a round of applause. Congratulations to both the schools, but I guess by this debate we will let nature take its course. Ladies and gentlemen, the debate may be over, but remember you can still be part of the show by following the conversation across our social media platforms with the hashtag GDC for SDGs. We'd also like to inform each and every school that here on the Great Debaters Contest, we not only debate about sustainable development goals, but we'd like to challenge each and every school to take up the SDG challenge by implementing at least one goal so as to make Kenya a better place. We would also like to appreciate all the stakeholders in this show, all the patrons and principals of participating schools that debaters themselves. That's it at the Great Debaters Contest. I have been your host, Esperancia Kapanga. And I am Chris Burr. See you same place, same time.